pretty good. I like anything to do with House of Black because well, yeah, I yeah. am a huge fan of Malachi Alistair mm-hmm. Black. Um, and I really kind of wish that he had been able to stick it out in WWE a little bit longer because right now would be an amazing time for him to be involved in a story that's like befitting his his sort of gothic weirdness. You know, well, like, I do think that we'll see Malachi Black and probably Buddy Matthews uh, back oh, yeah. in WWE at some point. And it brings up an interesting thought that I've had because I feel like House of Black is just sort of on on the uh, spinning its wheels, kind of like it, mm-hmm. they they never go forward or whatever. They just kind of stay in the same place. Treading water. And treading water would be a good one. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're just not around at all. And in the case of Malachi Black, this is like the first singles feud he's had in, I don't know, years in AEW. And he's someone that mm-hmm. they really decided, okay, we're not, we're not going to put a lot of emphasis on this guy. And that sort of started to be the case not long mm-hmm. after. If you remember when Vince retired the first time and there was this big scandal where someone was mm-hmm. reaching out to AEW stars that had been released and kind of letting yeah. them know, hey, there's a spot back here for you. They were tampering. Yeah. They were tampering, yeah. Um, so rumors are that maybe Malachi was one of the ones that wanted to get out of his AEW contract and go back to WWE. Of course, mm-hmm. his, uh, I don't know if they're married, but they've been together a long time. Uh, Zelina I Vega, I think they're married. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, obviously he might want to go back and and be on the road with his wife, Um, Mm -hmm. Buddy Matthews, well, he's with Rhea Ripley. Ripley. So, so like, even Judgment Day and House of Black, like, they're intermarried in a way, you know? (laughs) So, uh, so I do imagine that they're going back at some point, and I'm wondering if Tony Khan realizes that as well, and that's why Mm. Malachi has not really been pushed that much because when they do put a guy in a singles match, a guy from house of black in a singles match, it's Brody King. Yeah. It was Brody King in the continental cup, not Malachi black. So I'm wondering Mm -hmm. if Tony Khan thinks, okay, I'll probably be keeping Brody King, but these two other guys are going back to WWE. So I'm not going to push him. And yeah, you know, it's very possible, but then one just kind of has to like, just release them, man. That's, you know, that like, would make all the sense in the world. My cat is trying to get on the show here. Um, your cat's a huge Malachi Black fan. My cat is a gigantic Malachi Black fan. Um, but no, don't get, okay, hold on one second. Listen to you. What's her name? Come here. Come here, lady. Okay. Yes, no, I, Malachi Black is a, uh, uh, a performer that is, is too good for the spot that he's in. And there's more than one. Yeah, person. like he could be challenging for world titles. That's what he I mean. should be. Yeah, frankly, like he he should be uh, a top level guy. Um, but I think that just you know, and I try to. I really like Tony Khan. I really do, and I try not to be as critical of him as I am. But the dude does not know how to book things more than three or four weeks out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like he forgets he has to do it. And then he's like, oh, right, they're coming. So, you know, it, it's things that are kind of slapped together. And, you know, the the sort of flip side of that is is currently what's happening with Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. But mm-hmm. they're the ones that are spearheading that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like they're the ones that are showing up being like, Tony, this is how it's going to go. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure he's like, yes, OK, I approve. And they're like, yeah, sure you do. And, you know, <laughs> things like that. But uh there is just a little too much directionless um, booking for a roster of that size. Like it's, what were you saying the other day? Like 150 wrestlers. Oh God. I, I don't even know, but it, it's like, uh, like way more than WWE. And it's awesome that he's created those jobs, but a lot yeah. of the people just get lost in the mix. Right. Like Abs- it's um, like, it's hoarding wrestlers. Like maybe one third of AEW's wrestlers are like regularly featured on dynamite or mm. I wouldn't even say that many actually, uh, you know, and what kind of drives me nuts about it is he has the ability to create a system for himself, mm. much like WWD did with NXT where you know he could use a ring of honor or a elevation or something like that to let these guys get some reps in you know if you have 20 main eventers 
but only 10 hours of TV in your main shows, well, then why not put them on other shows? Mm -hmm. You know, why not use them there? And so what you're saying about him being like, well, I think these guys are out anyways. I'll just let them run out the clock. Yeah. It might be true because, yeah. you know, Tony's not looking at it from a financial perspective. What he's looking at everything right now, because he's in the middle of negotiations for the next TV deal, mm -hmm. is stability. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's guys like Miro who cause instability by pointing out that they're not being used. Yeah. And if you are Warner Brothers and you're going to give someone like a couple hundred million dollars for their TV show, and then you're looking at Twitter being like, hey, uh, this guy says he's he hasn't been used in six months. What are we paying him? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they start looking a little deeper and they start looking a little deeper and so on and so forth. And they kind of it can it can change things in terms of where his TV ends up. And he's not Billy Corgan. He can't just pull TV deals out of the thin air and then put them on an app somewhere, you know? So I think that he's probably not letting him go because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want the place to appear unstable while he's trying to sell it. If they weren't in those negotiations, maybe he would be just like, all right, yep. See you later. You know, I'll save your salary. Give me 90 days. You go do your thing. But I think that stability is worth more than than worrying about a few few thousand dollars for for wrestlers that he obviously doesn't really care about. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the reason uh, for it is, but at some point he's decided, OK, I'm not letting people out of their contracts, even if I'm not going to use them. And there's more examples than just Malachi Black. Like a lot's being made. There was a lot made today in the media about Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks mm. has only wrestled five matches in AEW all year. And he's a guy people really like. Of course, when he was on collision with CM Punk, uh, yeah. CM Punk was was making him a major character on that show every Saturday. And, mm. and now he's not really in the mix. However, Ricky Starks, Really good friends with Cody Rhodes, friends with CM Punk. Yeah, he was shown in a luxury box at WrestleMania 40, where he was seen in a luxury box at mm -hmm. WrestleMania 40. I think it would be real easy for Tony Khan to go, Oh, you're gonna go. Mm -hmm. Well, like, I'm not gonna put you on my TV anymore. And there is precedent for it. I remember when WCW. Uh, realized that Chris Jericho was not re-signing. He was going to WWE. Yeah. They took him off television for six months. It's like, well, we're not going to give yeah. WWE a hot star, right? Yeah. And uh, I guess he's also thinking, well, if I do have a chance of uh, re-signing this guy, I don't want his worth to be like way up here if I'm going to get into a bidding yeah. war with WWE. So he might be looking at it going like, well, you know what, Malachi Black, you're cool, but I got okada and mercedes monet and mm -hmm. this new generation of of aw stars has come in so he's just like whatever i'll just wait till they're they're gone but i think it would be cooler if he released them but evidently yeah, that's too. not what he's gonna do me too and and you just you kind of feel bad for the people involved like you know miro when was the last time miro did anything yeah, I mean, like he no. wrestles like a few times a year and they will, from time to time, they'll say, oh, he, he's injured or things like that. But the rumors are that there have mm -hmm. been creative disagreements. And so like to think of that, like Miro, I was so hyped for Miro and AEW. And it's really yeah. just been, we've wasted years of his career. Another yeah, example is, is Andrade. Andrade yep. just went back to WWE, realized like, he actually didn't wrestle on any pay-per-views at AEW. Like, he didn't do nope. shit, you know? And it's like, well, wait a second. We just wasted that guy. And I think, I, mm -hmm. I don't know this, but maybe he was one of the ones that went to Tony Khan and said, I'd like to go back to WWE. And, of course, he's uh, married, uh, or at least in a relationship yep. with Charlotte Flair. I think they're married. Yeah, they're married. I never remember when people get married. Well, they don't um, invite me anymore. No, I was not invited to that wedding, and I was really upset. 